Howdy, I am SW Hammond, and this video is all about the M Audio BX5 Carbon Black Studio Monitors. The good, the bad, and some of the things you might not typically think about. And toward the end of the video, I'll do an actual sound test of the BX5s, but remember with all studio monitors, you need to calibrate them when you first set them up. They're not a plug and play item right out of the box. For a quick rundown, of how to properly set up your monitors. Um, check out my other video. The link will be here, there, wherever. You know the drill, wherever links are typically found. Here's my setup. It's an office where I write my novels and it also doubles as a recording studio where I record audiobooks and podcasts. It's also where I make these YouTube videos and do a variety of multimedia projects. Very rarely am I doing actual album mixing anymore. So before the audio purists freak out about my uh, monitor placement, having these monitors elevated in the way they are isn't really that big of a deal, but more on this later. So let's get into the specs of the M-Audio BX5 Carbons. There is a 1-inch Silk Dome tweeter and 5-inch Kevlar woofers, and they're not carbon fiber, as the name would suggest. They are actually Kevlar. Turning it over on the back, we have XLR and quarter-inch TRS or TS balanced or unbalanced inputs. There is a port. They're rear ported. There is a... Um, volume control knob and a three-way room adjustment switch the power switch and a standard ac power cord input and a 110 or 220 selector switch these speakers are 70 watts uh, they're bi-amped which means 40 watts are going to the woofer and 30 watts are going to the tweeter they are shielded, so it's safe to use around ele other electronics and computer monitors. And there is a three-position pos acoustic space control, and this helps with um, less than ideal speaker placement. There's flat, negative 2 dB, and negative 4 dB. So this is pretty uh, standard. This is what comes in the box. You've got your foam padding, comes in a plastic wrap uh, protection, and just your standard um, user guide and like safety instructions. So nothing terribly exciting um, other than the actual speakers themselves. Okay, so how do the BX5s sound? I bought my pair during Black Friday of 2018. And it's now, uh, geez, I think it's, uh, it's actually the 31st. It's July 31st of 2019, so I've had a solid eight months of use out of these monitors. Um, I think it's important for you to understand that I'm not a master audio guru. Um, I have met those people, and I am not one of them. Uh, and becoming a audio ninja takes, you know, it's pretty much a lifetime pursuit. So um, I am not that person. However, I feel I do know enough and do have enough real-world experience to be dangerous here and offer you a little bit of insight. <laughs> All right, um, it's just not sounding right. I don't know if the lyrics are that fantastic, so uh, let's take a second look at it. So what's wrong with it? Because the won't you lick my taint part, I didn't even write that part. That's Sean's part. I wrote, you are a beautiful cheeseburger. For you, a puppy I would murder. The other part, the part that sucks, personally, I did not write. Um, back in the day, I was an assistant audio engineer on roughly 15 real albums. And when I say real, I mean a professional production in a legitimate studio. Um, I was also lucky enough to spend a little bit of time in some of the best recording studios in the world, uh, listening to mixes and demos back when I worked for Sony Music. The majority of my sound experience comes from live sound, which is a totally uh, different animal and not particularly relevant to this video, but 
I'm just letting you know that I've had the opportunity to listen to a variety of monitors in professional and technical settings. Um, I do have a bit of experience with audio equipment and, um, you know, kind of an idea of how sound works. So with all that said, what does that mean for the M-Audio BX5s? First off, these were not the speakers that I wanted, but in hindsight, they certainly fulfill all of my needs. I, like most of us, get caught up in conflating want versus need. And initially, you know, when, when I started looking, I wasn't in the market for a five inch, uh, uh, you know, the, the M audio BX fives in the slightest, I wanted a minimum of a six inch, uh, driver. Really. I wanted an eight inch driver. Um, I absolutely did not want something that was rear ported and I would have liked to have a little bit more power, you know, a hundred Watts or more. So with the BX fives, not meeting any of these big requirements, why did I go ahead and buy them? Well, B and H, the um, photography and video audio company, I'm sure you guys are familiar with them. They were having one of those flash sales uh, during Black Friday, and they were going for forty nine dollars a piece or one hundred bucks for the pair, and that's an absolutely absurd deal. Um, especially if, you know, you're currently shopping for these things. I just looked it up and they're going for, uh, right now, 150 each or $300 for the pair. So, um, yeah, the deal was just so good. I couldn't pass it up. Um, during that black Friday, I was going to buy something and I was looking in that 600 to $800 range. Um, you guys probably know exactly what I was looking at. and. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I figured if the BX fives didn't work out as my, um, everyday studio monitors for a hundred dollars, I could throw them in the garage. I could resell them on Craigslist, whatever. Um, so yeah, I took a chance and let's just get this out of the way right up front. If you're a professional sound engineer, working in a traditional recording studio, you probably already know that these aren't the monitors for you as your primary setup. If you are looking for a secondary pair, then yes, keep watching. And for the rest of us, we need to keep in mind that those engineers in those environments are a really small market. And you need to be honest with yourself about the type of creator that you truly are and not necessarily the creator that you aspire to be. And more importantly than that is you need to be honest about what your actual listening environment is. If you're not um, working in a properly sound-treated studio, stop spending your money on Premiere Audio equipment and trying to emulate those people, because that's where you need to start. You need to start with acoustic treatment. Um, once you get into high-end studio equipment, you quickly start to experience, experience diminished returns. And what that means, for example, is you can find moderately priced quality equipment that puts you in about that 97 percentile, say. In order to reach 98 or 99, the price of the gear increases exponentially, and those enhancements will really only be noticed in the best listening environs environments and by the most well-trained ear. So if you don't fit that category, then just buying the best thing in the world isn't going to solve your problems or make you a better engineer or creator. So yes, there is an improvement with most high-end equipment, but until you're on the cusp of becoming that audio ninja with years of experience and more importantly, the right environment, I always recommend investing more money into your room than into equipment. Um, if you don't have an acoustic treatment budget, buy gear on the lower end that gets you functional and able to work, and then take that extra money and spend it on pro properly treating your room. Acoustic treatment will give you 
far superior sound to pretty much anything else that you can do. So, you know, and nowadays the quality of budget microphones and speakers and other gear has come leaps and bounds in the last decade. And it's really amazing the sound that you can get out of, you know, cheap stuff. Um, and what it always amazes me, the people that go out and spend, you know, a grand or two on microphones or monitors, and then they record in a 10 by 10 box with hard flat walls. <laughs> and so just, I don't know, don't be that guy. Do it. Don't, don't do it that way. So, but I digress. Um, those of us in the real world with home studios, uh, B rooms and uh, quick, you know, quick workstation at broadcast companies and passionate individuals and content creators that work in multimedia. These M Audio BX5s could be a really affordable and fully suitable pair of monitors that helps you produce professional projects. These, um, these BX5s have five inch cones that are made of Kevlar. And they're not carbon fiber, as the name would suggest. Um, perhaps that carbon black in the name is just referring to the color. I don't really know. But um, Kevlar is typically yellow in color. And you've seen many monitors out there with yellow cones. However, be careful and don't just assume that if a speaker has a yellow cone, that um, it's actually Kevlar because there's a lot of cheap knockoffs. The KRKs kind of created that fad with the yellow Kevlar cone and a lot of crap manufacturers have, you know, been trying to copy them. DuPont is the official manufacturer of Kevlar and for something to officially or legally be able to be called Kevlar, it actually must come from DuPont. Um, these BX5s, these M-Audio BX5s are legit Kevlar. Alternatively, Carbon fiber is very, very similar to Kevlar, but ultimately it's an entirely different product. Um, as far as acoustic resonance is concerned and reproducing sound, the difference between Kevlar and carbon fiber probably really isn't that big of a difference. But obviously there's a huge difference um, between Kevlar and carbon, carbon fiber when it comes to stopping a bullet. So. Um, just know that that they're not the same thing. Um, if you've never listened to a Kevlar speaker, most speakers that you're accustomed to hearing are usually made of paper or polypropylene. They have polypropylene cones, and they do have a different sound. Kevlar is incredibly precise, and that's why you see it used so often in studio monitors. Um, but the problem with them is that they're also harsh and fatiguing. And these BX5s are no different in that department. And what does harsh and fatiguing mean? Well, the notes and sounds are so crisp that they have the sensation of being piercing. The sound doesn't seem to like blend and surround you. Rather, it, you know, the Kevlars seem to individualize the sounds and they attack you. Now, this is great for critical listening. Uh, the detail is fantastic, but as I said, this becomes fatiguing. Your ears and your mind will actually become overworked um, when you're exposed to these sounds for a long period of time. Now, there's two things that help with this. Um, one is you. Your body and mind will condition itself or it will train itself to hearing these sounds kind of just like working out in the gym the more time you spend listening to kevlar the more endurance your ears and mind builds up and eventually it'll become second nature you won't you won't really know the difference but first coming into kevlar i think you will you you'll definitely hear a difference um the second thing that is incredibly important with all studio monitors and especially these BX5 Kevlars, is allowing them the proper time to break in. And that means playing a lot of music and a variety of different kinds of music, um, you know, at a, at a kind of typical or a little louder than typical um, 
period of about 24 hours or more. And I don't mean all at once, but you need a solid week or two of normal sessions of, of listening time for these speakers to get broken in and mellow out. And they will, they will mellow, mellow out a little bit. So when I first plugged in the BX, BX5s and I let them rip, um, they were wince-worthy, harsh to me. I actually cringed a little bit. The clarity was fantastic, and they were filled with a super amount of detail, but they were not pleasant to listen to. Um, it's really hard to explain if you've never experienced it. And, you know, the best example I can give is like a 30-year-old pair of kefs with paper cones. These things are so far in the opposite spectrum of, of Kevlar's that they're all, you know, that the, the 30 year old kefs are almost too warm and the sounds almost blend together too much and becomes muddy. Now, obviously kefs are not muddy speakers and Kevlar's are not harsh speakers. These are just analogies that we use to help express the sensation and kind of discuss the nuances between them. You can still definitely articulate sound in, in the muddy calves like that. That's not an issue. And you can, the harshness isn't like an actual, um, painful feeling. So don't get conflated with that. They, these are just kind of words that we use to, to express the, the nuances with these types of speakers. So with that said, don't judge your M Audio BX5s right out of the box. These monitors truly need that break in period. And for me, it was really that two week mark when I started to become impressed by these speakers. Um, I think it was kind of two things that were happening. One, my ear uh, was becoming accustomed to them, it had been a while since I had been listening to Kevlar's. And also the speaker had the proper amount of time to break in. So both of these aspects kind of meeting in the middle. And when that happened, that's when I decided to keep these BX5s as my everyday studio monitors. Again, remember, I didn't want these speakers and I was highly skeptical of them. But after about two weeks, um, I decided that these speakers were doing everything that I wanted them to do. And I couldn't justify spending hundreds of more dollars on trying to chase better sound. Again, it's just diminished returns. The juice just wouldn't be worth the squeeze. And these BX5s were doing a great job. Um, yeah, the, the BX5s are only a five inch driver. So um, definitely lower your expectations when it comes to the low end. Yes, there's low end present, but you certainly won't feel it. Um, obviously, the BX5s blow the doors off of any normal desktop speaker setup you could have. But if you're actually mis mixing music or videos with low end rumble, you'll need a subwoofer. Um, that's typical and to be expected with a five inch speaker. And that's not a gripe against the BX5s. If you're expecting bass out of, you know, a five inch monitor, then your expectations are wrong. So um, when you get around to that eight inch driver side, you may not need a sub. Um, anything smaller than that, you probably will. And depending on the type of music you're making, even on an eight inch, you still may want, you know, a 10, 12 inch sub. So. These days, a lot of my mixes are all spoken word for audiobooks and things of that nature. And I'm not concerned with the, with the low end. So the BX5s are fine for me. However, I did cannibalize a 100 watt home theater uh, speaker sub that was just kicking around. And I hooked it up to my Mackie Big Knob and I can activate it with a push of a button. So I use, I turn the sub on, uh, basically just for entertainment purposes when I'm, you know, listening to music or, or, you know, watching videos or something of that nature. When I'm actually 
doing serious audio work and I'm doing my mixes for things that I'm making, I turn that sub off because I know it's a piece of garbage and it's just muddying things up. So um, that might be a good solution for you. Uh, if you're if you're just looking for bass uh, for entertainment pur- purposes, just throw throw something on that you got kicking around. Um, it it really fills that gap um, when just enjoying music and things of that nature. So the mid range and the tweeters are where these BX fives truly shine. They are very balanced and accurate, and I'm left with not needing anything more. Yeah, I might like a bigger driver for more presence, but straight across the board in a five inch category. These put against the JBLs, PreSonus, Mackie, KRK, whatever is out there. Um, it's really pretty much just subjective at that point. Each of these speakers are um, decently made and they do a good job of uh, doing what they were designed to do sonically. And it really comes down just to preference or features. And features may play a really big role in distinguishing these brands from one another. Um, If your desk and speakers are backed up against a wall, which most everyone's are, be careful of that rear port. And these ones do have a rear port. Rear ports firing against a wall will over-exaggerate the bass. And that's absolutely something you don't want when you're actually creating audio. Um, Your mix will sound good only listening in your room on your speakers and for everyone else in the world they won't be hearing what you're hearing because you're getting this over exaggeration of of um of bass that you know is no bueno so in my case to make the decision between all these companies as i said it really came down to just a black friday deal um the rear port for me is um I really didn't want that because they are up against a wall. However, behind that wall is um, six inches of um, the sound absorbing material. So it's not a piece of sheetrock behind those speakers. So um, I'm not as effective by it probably as most people are. Even still, um, it's not ideal. So. Keep that in mind. You may want a front port if you're pushed out and you don't have a dedicated listening room and your desk isn't sitting, you know, off the wall or something like that. Let's talk about the uh, sound stage with these BX5s. They have these monitors, uh, they have excellent imaging and it's very prominent. When I'm listening to a track and I'm sitting in this sweet spot, which is just generally anywhere in this area where I'm sitting right now. Um, I can easily point to where, you know, these imaginary instruments and the vocals appear in front of me. And, um, the way that I have my speakers positioned, I almost get this angelic or ethereal effect. Um, it's a subtle domination from above and I actually really like it. I I really like how these are set up and I know a lot of, you purists out there will be freaking out because um, monitors are not supposed to be elevated above your ears. You're supposed to be, um, you know, equal. They're supposed to be the same level. And yep, I know that. I understand. And I'm not mixing any Grammy award winning albums. And I'll go ahead and wager that uh, none or any of you that are uh, criticizing this. (laughs) So, um, The reason that I did what I did is because my computer screens take up a lot of real estate. They are two 32-inch mains, and then I've got the 15-inch laptop on the side, and then the other 24-inch monitor that runs other computers. And right now you see me and my camera's uh, uh, hooked up to it so I can kind of see what's going on. Um, Placing my monitors way out on the edge of my desk would uh, totally ruin the triangular distance between my head and the speakers, and it would totally destroy the soundstage. So I do understand the technical arguments of placing your monitors at your level. 
However, with most things in life, it comes down to practice and just being accustomed uh, and comfortable with your gear. Once you understand how the sound works uh, with the monitors being positioned the way they are, you can just kind of adjust to it. And that's what I, and that's what I've done. And having these ab ab above like they are, I actually prefer it now. I actually really like it. So um, for those that um, are interested in making speaker cradles, so these boxes that the speakers are sitting in, I built those um, and there's, there'll be a video um, within the next day or two, if, if you're finding this super early um, on how to make these cradles so that it pops right in. And um, they're just computer monitor uh, arms, the gas spring ar uh, arms that raise and lower, come in and out. You can position them any way you want. And um, if you're interested in making something like that, like I said, there'll be a video on those and I'll put a link somewhere and you guys know how links work. So, um, overall, what's the deal with these BX fives? And the bottom line is that I'm totally happy with them. And once they got broken in, I've been extremely, um, you know, surprised and, and impressed by them. They're, they're, I was pleasantly surprised with the, with these monitors so much. So obviously that I decided to keep them as part of my everyday studio setup. And I even went to the trouble of building these um, special cradles that were designed especially for these speakers so I could continue using them in this type of setup. So I have to like them quite a bit to continue to do all that. Um, to me, the BX5s were so good that I couldn't justify spending hundreds or thousands of dollars more on a different studio monitor setup. Um, because it fulfills basically all my needs for just generic multimedia creation. And I'd even feel comfortable um, doing casual home studio album mixes on these. Um, again, these aren't my go-tos if I'm in, in certain very technical situations and things of that nature. But I feel totally fine for doing, you know, vast majority of, of typical audio work. Um, now, these speakers won't kick you in the pants, um, but they do get plenty of loud for a normal room. And the most impressive thing about them is their detail. Being by amped, clarity is accurate and the driver and tweeter aren't competing with uh, each other. So something that we forget about when we get bogged down into the specs of all these different brands and we start, um, you know, watching these reviews and reading these reviews is that it's really fun to listen to good speakers and all of these speakers are good, right? And when you get to this type of level or this type of performance for a professional studio monitor, um, when you get your hands on a pair of something with this level of clarity, it gives a whole new dimension to the music and, and the things you listen to. And I love that. I love hearing the different mistakes and the subtle, subtle background noise um, in my favorite songs and things, things of that, that nature. You can actually hear a musician turning a paper page while they're reading sheet music or something. Or um, you can catch the different inflections within breaths between vocals, and you can kind of hear that emotion that, that certain vocalists will carry just kind of by the way they breathe and things of that nature. Um, and then it's also, you know, fun. You're listening to, to podcasts or watching YouTube videos and you can hear the birds outside their window tweeting or whatever else. So, you know, these BX fives are definitely accurate enough to find these types of things, which in turn makes me better when I'm creating my content, which is the whole purpose of a studio monitor. You'll be able to find the mistakes um, with this setup and then you can decide whether you want to leave them in or, or, uh, take them out, but you'll have the tool at that point to know what's actually going on with your mixes. And I do recommend adding a subwoofer. Um, I would cross them over between 80 and hundred Hertz, maybe even 120, depending on your sub. 
but let these BX fives run wild in the mid in the mid range. Um, being a five inch driver, the footprint of uh, the BX fives overall is relatively small. And I think that they'll probably work for most people's desk setups that they have. The speakers um, inside their boxes and everything, they measure 10 inches tall, seven inches wide, and about seven and a half inches deep. So keep in mind, if you do want that extra presence with a larger driver, you'll definitely need a lot more uh, workspace on your desk. So as I've said, I make audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube videos, documentaries, commercials. And um, at this point, I still um, compose a little bit of music for like short intros, outros, and stingers, things of that nature. But I do it all in a properly treated studio. And, you know, all of these walls that are around me, these curtains, it's all sound absorption panels and, and things of that nature above my head. There's skyline uh, sound diffusion panels, and um, even on the far wall that's traditionally usually behind me, um, there's a skyline diffuser over there as well. And so to me, because I do record, a good sounding room is way more important than good sounding gear. And I can compensate for crappy speakers or microphones to some extent. Um, but there's nothing I can do for a poorly treated room. And with these BX5s, I really don't feel that I am uh, compensating for anything at all or that they're holding me back in any way. Um, at their normal 300 price tag for the pair, I, I do give them my endorsement. I'm not going to say that the M audios are better than their competitors, but I will say if the BX fives have been on your radar and they're, um, if they're a speaker that you're interested in, I have zero hesitations in recommending them. Um, you just need to remember to give them the adequate break in period. Um, cause they can seem a little abrasive at first, but overall, the M Audio BX fives are a quality product. They're well made, and for me, they perform flawlessly. So um, that is that is what you have. That's my official review for these things. But um, before you go, the most important thing that uh, you need to do with your new studio monitors is to calibrate them, and that goes for any monitor, not just the BX fives. Uh, they will not work together straight out of the box. Um, the little dashes or numbers that you find on the back that control your volume are totally useless. And um, say you set them both to seven on each, it will not do the trick. They are not the same. It will not work. So um, if you need a little help in setting up and calibrating your new monitors, equalizing that volume so that they each play at the same level, Check out my other video on how to do that. Um, don't skip that step. Even if you don't go to me to do it, just make sure that you get it done because you'll be wasting your money and totally ruin, ruining your soundstage if you don't uh, properly calibrate these speakers. So to recap, oh my gosh, I haven't talked this much in so long. Um, acoustically treat your listening environment. That's... The biggest thing that I can tell you to do, no matter what you're doing, if you're listening, if you're recording, whatever you do, treat your room. Um, next, make sure you be honest with yourself about what you actually need, because like me, I found I was going to really buy a lot more. You know, I wanted bigger speakers. I wanted, um, you know, uh, more presence, bigger drivers, louder, this and that. And it turns out I really didn't need it. These things are totally fine. So, um, be honest with yourself. And I wasn't initially, uh, so don't fall into that trap. And lastly, um, calibrate your speakers before you use them. So that's it. I'm going to leave you with a little sound sample of these M audio BX fives. Granted, it's kind of a foolish, uh, endeavor that we're embarking upon because, um, 
it's totally dependent upon the speakers that you're listening to. Maybe you're on a laptop, maybe you're in earbuds, maybe you're uh, in a massive studio way better than mine. So it's all <laughs> very, very subjective and YouTube adds a ton of compression to this crap. Also, the quality of microphone I'm using. This is a, um, I'll be using a measurement micro microphone um, generally used for um, testing rooms. And it is it is very flat. It's the Dayton Audio EMM6. Um, it's not very dynamic, and it's not a large diaphragm or anything of that nature, but it should be fairly accurate. So hopefully it gives you an idea. If you found this review helpful, please like and subscribe and do all that crap. Um, you know, it really helps the channel, and um, I would appreciate it. So uh, comments are great as well. I, you know, I dig those. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if I'm a total idiot and you think that these speakers are just awful or um, maybe you have a pair too and you dig them as well. So uh, let's talk about it. Um, yeah, this is what these uh, BX5 sound like in action. So uh, enjoy. Thanks for watching. Thank you.